All right, um, I'm going to bring Kenny back, but again, since we're talking about uh, about passion, to see this guy work his magic with the athletes and posing, uh, it is, it's, it's quite magical. Um, he's a, a, he showed me a picture of him bodybuilding in the past, and to see his conditioning, it's like, wow, I just stopped. And as, as many of us, life gets in the way. Uh, but what he's become is an ambassador and a vehicle for you to educate and instill the love he has for the sport and the detail. I, I think I was someone that paid close attention to detail. And there's, there's nobody like Kenny. But um, again, uh, we'll bring him back for the, the posing clinic. We'll talk about every, every division offered by the NPC and IPB in posing. Uh, he'll kind of he'll touch on the, the um, mandatory poses as well as his interpretation of how the best to present you. And that will be the group posing clinic. Then after that, uh, as you enter, you guys um, purchase for Kenny your one-on-ones. And that's when the magic is going to really come out because he sees your lines. And I invite all of you to stay and watch. Um, you'll see that even though he may be doing uh, three figure girls in a row, he will not tell every figure girl to do the same exact pose. They'll look at your lines. And he's, you know, you're his sculptor. And this is what I see. He, he came up on his own dime during the Christmas holidays to support our cause in Puerto Rico. Yes. And I'm saying, hey, let me, no, no, I don't want it. And, uh, you know, that's not, that's not the norm in our industry. You gotta pay for my flight, my meals. I eat eight times a day. <laughs> you know, I need I need a certain kind of room. It's gonna be in the corner of the hotel on the 18th floor. <laughs> Kenny didn't ask for anything. So if you haven't met him, it's 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 a pleasure to have him around. The energy, it's it's contagious, infectious. So, but Kenny, if you can now just talk about those bodybuilding days of that rip Kenny wallet that I saw. <laughs> uh, well, Tim, thank you so much for having me here. It's always an honor you know, and a privilege and, uh, to be with you and, and everybody else. It's just, uh, it's still so surreal to me, you know, like I can trust myself, you know. But, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. <coughs> I forgot, in Puerto Rico, we had a little drum roll for this guy. <laughs> he is he is right now the hottest item in, in posing, uh, not just in the states but the entire world. Uh, athletes, top Olympians, come to this man and go. When can you fit me in? So we did the drum roll, Puerto Rico, and all the other musical instruments that they have down there. It's quite, it's quite festive. <clears throat> and I said the IFBB, MPC. Uh, Posing specialist extraordinary. Yeah. 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 Kenny Wallace. Right. <laughs> well, everybody, um, it's, uh, you know, I'll give you a quick background on me. Uh, I started in the sport in 1982 uh, when the first year of the MPC came out. I was uh, just turned 17 years old when I stepped on stage. And I was this little, you know, 119-pound guy, and uh, competing against the teenagers. But back then, it was short. It was high classes back then, and I just got killed. But I knew I posed. And for some reason, well, see, what happened was just to make it real quick. Um, there were all these uh, bodybuilding magazines, like Muscle Fitness, Muscle Digest, Iron Man magazine. When they came out in like little eight by tens, if you want to call them, like them ones, like random ones. So I studied that, and you know, it was funny because when I was listening to John, I was like, oh my god, I used to bring my magazines to class as well, <laughs> you know, or, or, or everywhere we went in the car, I was like, just buried in it, you know? So that was my way of being introduced to posing, because um, I was just admiring all these guys, and that was, well, let's see, so that was back in 80, yeah, 80s when I started picking up the reading magazines, so now we see all the, you know, guys, you were hitting your poses, and I would do that, and I would, you know, 
you know, and I started getting into the weightlifting a little bit when I was 14. And so I became really um, infatuated with the posing of these guys, you know. Um, they had a muscle digest to put a, 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 a spread on the 1981 Olympia. And what happened was they came out with like little pictures. Three, I cut them up and I laminated them. And those were my baseball cards. You know, that became my... I, I wanted to know every name. I wanted to know every, you know, I would look at the bin and say, okay, that's Kellogg. Okay, that's my cat. Okay, that's Franco. That's Tom Platt. Blah, 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 blah. So, and it, it just became part of me. It became part of me. You know, it was just my blood. So, you know, I competed and I did very well and I would get into condition and stuff like that. And what happened was, just to give you a little, quick little story, um, in my very first contest, grown ups, and again, I was just a little teenager in a, gym with the grown-ups. So the grown-ups would come see me and I would give my presentation and just by the way, so you know, my first first contest that I ever saw and uh, had seen in my life was the 1982 AAU Mr. America. And that's where I learned the, the posing stuff then because, you know, I was able to see it. It was out in Massachusetts. I was living in Connecticut, you know, and so that was like, that was it. That was game over. So I mimicked some of the posing, I mimicked some of the posing routines. Mike Sable is the one that I copied, okay, stole. Zipper. I haven't used his music. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, so, um, it was Pink Floyd, my uh, time by Pink Floyd, so. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I competed for, for quite a few years, did very well, but um, the grown-ups in the gym after seeing my first show asked me if I could, you know, saw my routine, asked me if I could help them. Well, lo and behold, I did. You know, 17 years old, I'm helping the grown-ups, and they were winning. Not because of their presentation on the, on the pre-judging, but, you know, the posing. So it kind of all worked in sync because what they did in the routine, they were doing in their managers. And they were winning. And then it was like, you know, word of mouth, because I'm just this little kid, and I'm just helping out, and I'm competing throughout the years, too. So I got to display what I was doing on stage, and it kind of all kind of melded together, you know, and it... Okay, so then I stopped retire. I stopped competing. And my main thing was to help people, you know, compete. And it was very, you know, kind of like under the rug, you know, because, you know, there wasn't like it the social media where people could say stuff and um, nobody really kind of mentioned anything unless you were doing something in an article or magazine or something. Well, sure enough, um, back in 2006, Evan Santapani is a, you know, pro bodybuilder, and I helped him get ready for his very first show ever. Where you know Evans, you know Olympia level now, and you know wants titles. One of the Tim shows like two years ago, three years ago, three, three, yeah. So, and then all of a sudden, like you know, he started mentioning in, in magazine articles, and so being in contact with me in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, then MySpace came out, and more people that I was working with on a uh, national level were mentioning me, and that's when it really started to like really explode for me because. Mm -hmm. It was just getting out there, and then people were putting videos out and mentioned all of this, and it just grew. Um, so that's my background. So you know, like Tim said, you know, I'm very, very fortunate and blessed to be able to work with athletes all over the world now. Um, pretty much on every continent except for Antarctica. Antarctica. But I'm working on that. I'm going to find somebody else. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm very, very blessed to be able to work with, you know, athletes around the globe. We do it via Skype or FaceTime. It's very, very successful, thank goodness, and thank God. Um, and then, you know, of course, I'm able to travel the country now and work with, you know, everybody at all levels. And that's the thing that I'm really, really, um, you know, I'm really important to me that I, I, I work with all levels from very, very first timers because I can make those first timers pose like they're seasoned veteran pros. It's just a matter of teaching them and being patient with them and knowing that you care. And I think what, what's part of the success is that, you know, there's a, um, a quote where, you know, nobody really cares how much you know until they find out how much you care. And once they find out how much you care, then the learning is much easier. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, you know, is he here? You know, they know that you care and so they absorb it better. And it, we connect, you know, there's that connection. And, you know, then when you see them do well, it's just, you know, it's a feeling very, very satisfying. I do go on with that description, too. But. So the thing that I want to emphasize, so that's my background, and, you know, 
But the thing that I want to emphasize a little bit is, because um, I know we're kind of pressed for time a little bit, is um, making all those sacrifices that you make going into a show, it's everything. It's, it's everything. You know, you put your blood, your sweat, your tears, your money, your energy, your time. Everything is put into this goal of that one moment that you have on stage. It doesn't last very long, but you want to make it worth it every single second. Okay? So what I do is I make all those efforts that you put in and I wrap it all up into like a gift wrapping. Okay? To make it where it's beautiful and all that energy that you spend, all the time, it just justifies. The posing justifies everything that you do. You know, getting ready for this one special moment. So why not do it the best? I mean, that's the only thing you have control of, actually. When you're on stage, it's the only thing you have control of. You have no control of who's going to show up. You have no control of how anybody is going to look. Okay? You have no control of how the judges are going to judge you. You have no control whatsoever. Okay? But you do have control of how you're going to present all that hard work that you put into the gym. You have control of it. So you have to take it and grasp it hard and don't lose it. And present yourself the way you deserve to be presenting yourself. Okay? And it really, it really, really matters. Because at the end of the day, you want to leave that competition knowing that you left no stone unturned. Okay? Because you can put in the work and you can spend the money and you can spend the time. Okay? But if you leave that posing element stone unturned, okay, and you get beat because your posing stunk, all that time, all that stuff just goes down the tube. And you can't even leave the, you can look fantastic. You can look the best you've ever looked, but you're going to leave that venue feeling like shit about yourself because you know that you didn't do everything you were supposed to be doing. And that's the worst feeling in the world. Imagine looking the best you've ever looked and losing it because you couldn't present it. Are you kidding me? Okay? So that's my job. That's my job. I make sure that that, that, that doesn't happen to anybody, whether you're a first-time athlete or an Olympia competitor. Okay? So, you know, with that being said, my advice to you because again, a lot of a lot of posing is looked upon as another burden. Just one more thing I have to do for the show. to you, as a competitor, is to keep. And, and I even put this on the NPC News online on cracking pack or uh, posing practice tips. Is to keep your posing sessions no more than ten minutes. No way. Don't go any more than ten minutes because you're not going to learn to come up with anything. Okay, on the eleventh minute that you're already doing on the ninth. <laughs> okay? Okay? So that's my one solid, solid piece of advice to all of you guys and girls, is to keep your posing sessions to 10 minutes only. And I don't care if it's the week before the show. Okay? If you want to do more ses more time, then do two sessions of 10 minutes. Do two sessions. You can do one in the morning, one at night. Okay? One with a mirror, one without a mirror. Okay? Obviously, you want to do as best you can so you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn, and then about three weeks before the show, then you start taking the mirror away. Okay? So maybe, you know, one, you know, say seven days a week, four of them at night you take out the mirror, and so on and so forth. Last week before the show, you take out, you pose in front of your camera phone, and you video yourself here. Let's video yourself. So that's really the, the one major piece of advice is to keep it short, keep it fun, don't make it a, bur a, a burden on yourself. And besides, you're going to absorb it better. You know what I mean? Um, and the other piece of advice I'm going to give real quick, and then I'll turn it back to Tim, is you have to... Structure is the main part of posing. I don't care whatever category, it's all about structure. You have to be aware of the fact that maybe something doesn't look right. Okay? Structure is the key. If you're seeing unevenness, or you're seeing lopsidedness here, or here, or here, or, you know, anything that kind of doesn't look structurally sound, kind of recognize it. Recognize it. And I'm talking about whether you're working with somebody or you're not working with somebody. Because a lot of times, if you're home and you don't have somebody guiding you along, you have to kind of be on yourself, be on your self-coach. So, structure is always going to be the key. Perfect structure.
Okay? No, you know, lifting your shoulders up, lifting your shoulders up, lifting, you know, side chest, then, you know, stuff like that. Level, level, level. Always stay level. And the more that you can kind of recognize something as being structurally sound and it just looking right, you know, it's like you have that instinctiveness where you say, you know what, yeah, that doesn't really look solid. And then there's some things you say, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay? So it's just kind of just looking at magazines, going online, getting some ideas of, you know, what can be structurally sound. You know, just to get an idea and then apply it. Apply it within the 10 second practice sessions. Oh, one more thing I gotta say because this is crazy important, okay? You're not, it's, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go on any back mirrors. Back mirrors, back mirrors, back mirrors. You guys need to do it. I'm not saying go into an aerobic room and then trying to angle your seat in the corner way, way, way over there because you can see your back. I'm talking about getting a mirror at home, one of those little rectangular mirrors that you put in the back of the door at Walmart or anything like that. You gotta, you gotta use a back mirror. I mean, it's, how many times have you heard, oh, shows are one lost from the back? Okay, well, don't leave that to chance, okay? If you're, it's a pretty important deal, then you don't want to leave that to chance. So, the third piece of advice I'm giving, okay, is to get that back mirror. So, if you're posing, let's say, okay, let's use this. So, if you're posing here, and you're looking at the mirror, okay, and you're hitting it, and then you've got to turn around, what you want to do, okay, that's the front mirror, remember, okay? You take a little mirror, and you take it off to the side, those little rectangular mirrors, put it off to the side, and angle it. So, now, when you're doing your back shot, you can look off to the side and see what the hell's going on. And it costs you 12 bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's such a simple little stupid thing, but it makes a mile, mile difference. Okay? So please do yourself the monster favor, mirror or whatever you want to buy, I don't care what size, and use a back mirror when you're posing. Please practice the back shots where you can you can't correct something if you don't know what it looks like. Okay? So those eight factors, okay? So it's shorter, 10 minute practice sessions, whether it's one or two a day, separate them so they don't get crazy. Also practice between sets. If you want to practice between sets, that's always cool to do, okay? Um, because again, you know, you want it to become like breathing. And if you can do that, you're in. Um, what's the second one? Okay, per, like, you know, just general structure. Keeping things even, keeping things <coughs> okay, um, keeping things relaxed, okay, and relaxed to the point where you're just you know looking structured. A lot of times when you're not relaxed, you're gonna your structure's gonna be off because your ears are gonna be that you know shows your ears and all kinds of stuff happens. Um, last one is that back mirror. That's the third the biggest thing. Um, any questions at all? Yes, sir. I was until Aaron walked in over there. So, question for you with the posing stuff. Uh, when you go to six, like six foot four inch line, six foot seven inch line, yeah. do you pose them differently, like the side chest pose, and try and get them lower? Or no, no, don't pose do squatting. No, there's no, no, and never go squatting with a pose. Because yeah. you're never going to get a good leg shot when you're squatting. You understand what I'm telling you? You have to stay more upright. I'm not saying, yeah, but don't, don't try to get squatting with it. Because there's no way that you're going to get a really good hamstring hang, uh, hamstring up you know, by uh, squatting down. Because if you're squatting down, the back leg that you, that I have, when you press that inner thigh again so you can get a nice hamstring bow, is going to disappear because your legs are going to be at the same angle. So how are you going to wrap that hamstring over something that's on the same angle? You have to create different angles, okay? So, you know, I, you know, so don't get some, you know what I'd like to do? Here's my, what I'd like to do. Just for everybody, this goes for everybody too because we're all kind of doing stuff from the side, you know? Um, you always keep the back leg kind of straight. There's kind of different techniques that I use to bring out the hamstring, but the the most general one, which is kind of, you know the easiest, is to keep the back leg straight. Then you take that you know inner thigh, you know, whatever side you turn from, take the inner thigh, and that's what's getting going to make the hamstring hang, the inner thigh, because like I say, well, wrap the knee over, wrap the knee over, wrap the knee over. Yeah, you wrap the knee over, but it's more than that. You know what I mean? It's, there's another step to it, and it's called, you know, it's just putting the inner thigh against the back leg. Then what you do is, when you hit it and you're wrapping it, obviously this, this um, leg is going to be a little bent, right? So then you just pop that back knee to meet the back of the knee so you don't have any gaps, because gaps make legs look small. You know what I mean? When you have, like, 
uh, what do you call that, light? Yeah, if you could see like light through, you don't want us to do that anymore. You want to be fairly compact looking. Close your gaps. Huh? Close your gaps. Close your gaps. So, you know, so, you know, stuff like that, but yeah, so don't ever get squatty for the sake of making yourself shorter. You know, and not for anything, but if you're posing the same way as everybody else and you have that nice height and you have the width and the taper and everything else, then you're in a good place. Okay? Yeah, but don't get squatty. Squatty is just a tough thing. Any other, anybody else? Have a question? Yes, sir. Kenny, yes, who's, who's your uh, favorite posers and why? Okay. <clears throat> favorite routine of all time uh, for me was Lee Haney, 19, 1986, Mr. Olympia. What a sick routine. I still look at it all the time. Sick. He used um, Rocky IV music. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I mean, goosebumps, like, still. It's like, so I try to, like, space it out so I get just as excited. As <laughs> you know? Um, and then, of course, you know, Lee Labrada. I mean, Lee's amazing. He, he's an amazing uh, poser. Um, I would say those are my two fears. And, and Arnold, too. I mean, Arnold had phenomenal posing technique. Um, he was very structured in his posing. And I've always admired it about him. Um, in fact, that picture of the side chest, that was modeled after him because he always did from the side. He didn't turn, you know? So I was like, so, but I love Arnold's posing. Like I said, very, very structured. Um, but I would say, yeah, those are my top guys. So what, um, what made those guys such great posers? I'm sorry? What made those guys such great posers? Um, Lee Labrada for me, see, I like, now remember, for me, Lee, Lee Haney's um, routine was my favorite all time. Lee, Lee Labrada was my favorite structure, okay? He always nails his poses like, just, I mean, absolutely so precise. Um, and what do they call it with the mandatories? He was just amazing. It still blows my mind every time I see something on him. Um, so yeah, he's my favorite like mandatory pose guy. And then I think just overall general, um, like I said, with Arnold was he just brought everything. You know, he just level it strong. It's just awesome. Yeah, so those are my first, my, my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? Give some pretty good tip tips, so <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much again for everybody. I, I can just go on and on and on, but I know we're past the time. Um, thank you so much for having me, and I hope I get to work with you guys and uh, show you some really cool stuff, all right? Thank you, everybody.